All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. And today I am joined by Dave Kirpin. And where are you today, Dave? I am in New York City, uh, likable uh, offices. Excellent, and likable offices. So Dave's serial entrepreneur, New York, tele, uh, New York Times bestselling author, global keynote speaker, and he's the founder and chairman of Likeable Local, a social media software company serving thousands of, of biz, small businesses and chairman and co-founder of Likeable Media. What we wanted to talk today is about your book, which has got a fascinating title, uh, The Art of People, 11 Simple People Skills That Will Get You Everything You Want. Um, so um, let's just start there, Dave. So what was the, what was the genesis of this? Yes, exactly. What, what was the genesis of the book? Well, <clears throat> this is my uh, fourth book, and uh, I had previously written books on social media and business and leadership. And um, as I uh, as I uh, t wrote and talked about those books, I realized that um, even as I broadened um, my focus, a lot of the a lot of similar um, skills and topics kept kept resurfacing. And so, for this, this is of course my broadest book yet, in as much as pretty much everyone needs to improve uh, can improve our people skills and can benefit from improving our people skills. So, you know, here I apply a lot of the same lessons and some new ones, uh, some really big strategic things like listening and how to become a better listener and why listening is so much more important than talking, as well uh, as some uh, much kind of more tactical things like uh, always taking the water and um, in, in meetings. And it, it says uh, the subtitle is 11 simple people skills that will get you everything you want, but it's really... It's really about 53 uh, chapters, and um, they, they call, come in 11 different categories, but they're really 53 skills that I focus on in the book. Yeah. So um, I'm looking at it here, um, understanding yourself, understanding people. So I, I would I would posit and let's see what, what you think that um, people spend a lot more time trying to understand other people than they ever do trying to understand themselves. Would you agree with that? I would. And um, my... Uh, yeah, my, my, my sort of first um, thesis in the book is that people need to understand themselves before they uh, should even bother kind of going out into the world and trying to figure everyone else out. And, um, yeah, to your point, a lot of us don't um, do not do too much introspection and don't really try to figure ourselves out. And so if we can't if we don't even know ourselves, how can we possibly know others? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I have um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of. Uh, therapy and coaching and all sorts of uh, ways, reading and all sorts of ways to um, better understand ourselves. But um, in in uh, the book, uh, I present my favorite personality assessment as well. It's called the Enneagram. And the Enneagram is a centuries old uh, personality assessment system. It's far less famous than than others mm -hmm. like uh, Myers-Briggs and DISC. Um, but it's actually, in my experience, um, far more effective and reliable and useful as a tool. And so I, I have a, a version of the Enneagram and then uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, 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 some written work on, you know, once you take the test, what, what does this all mean for you? And it's, of course, just the tip of the iceberg. Sure. Um, and, um, you know, one of the nice things that's come out of the book, you know, I, I wrote it a couple of years ago. Uh, so it's still doing very well, but um, it's, you know, it's a couple of years old now. And um, uh, a lot of people that have read the book have gone on to uh, fall in love with the Enneagram as much as mm -hmm. I had and, and continue to use it as a tool to better understand themselves. Yeah, no, that, that's a great point. And there's another part that's kind of interesting. I see one of your topics here is um, most people are lonely, so help them feel connected. And I do think that, you know, we live in such a strange world nowadays, you know, with social media where we're bombarded nonstop with snapshots in time of people's lives where we as humans tend to fill in the gaps right and we look at i look go oh look at dave's instagram oh look at that oh he has the best life ever right and my life you know sucks in comparison so i mean how do you how do you connect with uh, help people feel connected because we're kind of so bombarded that i can see that people are feeling more lonely and maybe more than you know perceive themselves to be more inadequate Right. So social media, which is my area of expertise mm -hmm. in terms of our businesses, is is, uh, is really uh, a highlight reel of people's lives. Mm -hmm. and, and it's easy to lose sight of that. Uh, as you said, it's easy to look at everyone's feeds and uh, and and uh, 
think that uh, people, other people are living better lives than, than, than you are. But it, so the first thing is just keeping that in perspective. Um, and yes, to your point, and as I wrote, as I, as I've written, um, we are the most connected with that we've ever been with respect to our, our phones. Um, and so we're most, the most connected to each other in the world. Um, but we're actually, uh, less deeply connected than we've ever been as well. And it, it, our connections are very, very surface. So, so what I argue in the art of people is when we can sincerely and genuinely ask deeper, more important questions to people and then like literally shut up and listen and pay attention to what they're saying uh, and care what they're saying, that act alone will differentiate you from every other idiot that is not listening. Um, or if they're listening, they're not listening with the intent to understand. They're listening with the intent to reply. They're listening with the intent to yes. figure out what it is to say next instead of really just listening to pay attention to the other person because you care about them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I have a whole bunch of questions that I use as an ex as examples, but it really, you know, just because I list 10 questions doesn't mean you can't find your own, mm -hmm. but asking questions like, you know, what are you most excited about right now? And, uh, you know, what is the charity organization that you care about the most? Um, you know, what is, what is one, you know, op, one is one challenge you're going through right now, asking questions that get people talking about more vulnerable, more, uh, deep things than, uh, what do you think of the weather or what do you think of the Yankees? You know, these are, these, these, these will be much better at getting people to open up to you. And in the long run, much better at building real authentic connections, which will in turn help you actually, uh, get what you want. Yeah. And you raised a you raised a point earlier, and I think um, I mean I agree with what you're saying there. But the 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 flip side of it is that when you ask a question like that, you have to really listen and understand what the other person says, right? I mean, you mentioned therapy. You know, they do in couples therapy where they one person says something and the other person has to repeat it and show that they understood it, and the other and the other person has to agree before they can move on, right? To to a response. But I think that's a that's a critical piece right there. If you ask these kind of questions, you have to really listen and actually want to understand what the person's saying, right? Yes, and uh, I actually cover these uh, fairly simple yet uh, very very powerful uh, psychological principles in the book. Um, so listening is really, you know, listening is the single most important skill and the most underrated skill. And you know, everyone thinks they're a good listener, and most people aren't. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, how do you become a better listener? Well, you know, start with actually listening. But then, uh, to your point, the psychological principles of mirroring and, and actually repeating back word for word what you're hearing, and then validating, which means actually walking in the other person's shoes, mm -hmm. and um, and experiencing their emotion as yours. Excuse me. It, these, th this is a much deeper, more effective way of listening than just listening and, you know, then, then, then talking back at someone. So, yeah, I mean, the reason that therapy works so well for so many people is that's what the therapist does. They listen, they mirror you, they validate you, and they make you feel heard and cared about. And, and w when we get this down, when we can get this down with other human beings, whether it's our husband or wife or our employees or our prospects that we're selling to – um, this, this, this works really, really well. Mm -hmm. It's funny. There's, um, there's a lot of talk about the golden rule mm -hmm. and the golden rule is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Do it to others as you would like done to yourself. But in the art of people, I talk about a more valuable rule, which is the platinum rule, which is do unto others as they would like done to themselves. So just because you would like it, a la right. golden rule, doesn't mean that they would. And it's only through really understanding somebody else and listening to them and understanding what their motivations and wants and needs are that you can actually treat them with uh, the utmost, you know, respect and and uh, empathy and 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 help them. You know, if, if sometimes we assume that people are just like us and yeah. more often than not, they're not. So <laughs> so it's, it's really a matter. It, it, it takes some work to, to, to figure that out.
Yeah, because that's a, that's a fantastic point there, because I do think that that's probably one of the greatest frustrations that we feel in life is when, is the fact is other people are different from who we are, deal with things differently. Um, it's say in a work context, you know, maybe somebody has a different process for doing something than you, than how you would do it. And you, you get frustrated because they're not doing it the way you would do it. But but maybe they're doing it equally effectively. It's just a different way of doing it. So I think that's a that's a tough thing for people is actually to deal with the fact that everybody is not like you and they don't think like you and they don't react like you. Yeah, exactly. And 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 the first step is 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 understanding that, and then the second step is understanding who they are as people, mm-hmm. or, who, or what we talked about earlier, understanding yourself and understanding who they are. So, for instance, at the at at, at our companies, we, we administer the, the Enneagram assessment to everybody. So I, I literally have a spreadsheet with 100 people and their Enneagram uh, uh, types. So I understand on a deep level what motivates them, what moves them, what inspires them. And you know, obviously, the more the, the more intimately you get to know somebody, the better. But just using that as a starting point um, can be very, very valuable. Yeah, and 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 I did notice that this made me smile a little bit because I did notice also you have in in one of your other chapters you have it's better be happy than right. That was something I don't know. Some wise person told my wife and I early in our marriage was uh, so we use that all the time when whenever we have we have our rare little uh, arguments, and at the end of the day we go. Well, do you want to be right or happy right now? <laughs> so explain yeah. to me a little bit more about that in the in the context you meant it here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the reality is, um, at the urging of my editor, I did I did uh, use the subtitle "Eleven Simple People <laughs> Skills That Will Get You Everything You Want." But I would be the first to admit this is a bit hyperbolic, in as <laughs> much as there is no secret sauce to automatically always get everything you want. Sure. So. If and when there are times where we can't get what we want, we can choose to be upset and angry and, you know, stomp our feet in the ground. Or we can choose to let it go and choose to be happy instead of being right. And that's 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 my point in that chapter. Mm -hmm. There are times in 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 our home life as well as our career where there where things happen that are out of outside of our control. And again, we have a choice. We can either stop, you know stomp our feet um or kind of work on letting it go and, and and don't get me wrong that's that's mm-hmm. one of the hardest skills you know that makes listening look super easy yeah. is, is, is the art <laughs> of letting go and, and there are books and books and courses yeah. and courses on that but i certainly have found that it to be a very very important lesson in my life in my marriage mm-hmm. and in, in my relationships um at, at home and at work to to kind of know when maybe it's time to let this go. And, you know, when I, when I speak, I do keynotes all over the world. I talk about this, the the book and the lessons learned in the book. And, you know, for me, the ultimate lesson was in letting go because I, Mm -hmm. you know, it was uh, uh, early on in my life. uh, I, I met this woman that I fell madly in love with. And uh, I, you know, I thought I was going to marry her and, um, uh, there was a problem. She was, she was actually married already. So, you know, I, I, uh, I, I had to let, let it go. And it was, mm-hmm. it was one of the hardest things I ever did, but, but eventually I did, I let, let her go. And, um, you know, several years later we, uh, had, she was divorced and, uh, we got, to, got together and, um, and, you know, and we've been happily married, you know, now for, uh, the last, uh, uh 13 years with three kids and, uh, thriving businesses and just a wonderful life. I pinch myself every morning when I wake <laughs> up because of how grateful I am. Um, but it, had I not uh, let her go in the first place, uh, who knows uh, what, what might have happened. Yeah, that's a fa- and that's a fantastic takeaway for people because I do know that, you know, letting go is one of the one of the toughest things. And it's funny how, you know, we will we will hold on to a success or something so much shorter, the feeling of it, than we will to something you know, negative. I don't know. It's human nature, but letting go is such a hard thing. And I always say to, and you know, and I always say to people like, um, you know, it's a lesson I learned in 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 a business context uh, many years ago. Is like, is this really the hill you want to die on? You know, so like, choose choose the hill you want to die on very carefully. Don't try. Don't don't choose to die on every hill that it, that presents itself. Right, right. And when you do, when you do, when you do pick your battles, as you said, you know. Um, you'll be respected for it and, and, and sort of paid attention to more 
are those times where you do step up and say, you know what, this this is something I'm going to put my foot down on, and you know, you, you'll you'll be respected a lot more having yeah. having uh, having let other things go. Yeah, and you also mentioned managing up, right? Because that's something I and that and that's something I think that a lot of people miss and don't understand that concept. Because I always that's the advice I give to people nowadays when they say, you know, I've just moved into the uh, you know this new senior position, you know, and I've got to manage all of these people. And I say, no, you've got the most important person you got to manage is the one directly above you. So learn that first. Everything else will take care of itself. So give, give me give me your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. Um, uh, and, and, and really all you need to do is apply the platinum rule, as we just mm-hmm. said. So, 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 so thinking about putting yourself in that, in your boss's shoes and thinking, what, what does he need? What does she need? What's going to make her happy? Um, you know, are there certain metrics I need to hit? Are there certain people that I need to keep out of her office? Uh, you know, uh, uh, are, is there, um, are there certain relationships I can help her develop? Um, how can I make him or her look good and and when you when you do think like that and put yourself in their shoes um you're going to be beloved <laughs> by them and yeah and then and then you can worry about all the people that that report to you uh later but to your point it's probably first to to figure out you know what can i do here to make my boss look and feel like a superstar and make my boss look and feel really good about uh the work and the the end results here and sometimes sometimes you know you got to just ask right like mm-hmm, some, you, sure. again and the, the whole thing is not to assume anything and you know just because you think that you're putting out the best product doesn't mean that you know um for a three in enneagram three and this is sort of ironic because i wear a hoodie today on video i didn't know we were on video <laughs> so okay. i was gonna say for an enneagram three image is really important for instance so if your boss is a three you might put out a really, really good product, but if you don't look super polished mm-hmm. uh, when you're presenting it, it's not going to be received the same way. Mm-hmm. And uh, on the other hand, there are some bosses that don't care how polished you are. They care about what's written in the report and what the actual metric is. And so understanding that, understanding that difference um, is really, really important. Yeah, and it all kind of ties back to what you were saying at the beginning is about understanding people and understanding the differences and the different motivations. And there's one other thing I wanted to touch on um, before we finish up is the the resolving conflict with people piece because I think this is this is such a tough area. You know, you have people who are completely conflict averse, so they just avoid it at all costs. You have other people who will get into conflict but don't really like resolving it, so it's just sort of you know they just separate or whatever but this is this is an area of conflict and you need a certain amount of creative conflict at times right you know you can't always agree on everything but talk to me about um what you have learned around the idea of how to deal with and resolve conflict well everybody wants to walk away from a conflict feeling like they won Mm -hmm. and so the key here is to create a win-win situation and what 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 often ends up happening of course is the opposite (laughs) and people walk away feeling like they lost both people walk both parties feel away walk away feeling like they lost so that's the worst possible outcome of course um and um then that middle outcome is where one person feels like they win and the other person feels like they they lost and i'm gonna say i'm gonna rank that in the middle whether it's you or the other person it doesn't really matter because in the long run it's not going to be a good result if the other person feels bad so really the, the the best of the four possible outcomes is that you feel like you're you're winning and the other person feels like they're winning how can you do that some concessions some uh, you know great point uh you know, figuring out, again, if you're going to, what are you going to draw the line in the sand about? And what can you let go? What can you, what can you give to the other party? What can you uh, concede in a way that they're going to feel like they got what they wanted also? Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, if you look at it as a zero sum game, you're never going to achieve that, that you have to look at it as a, as, as like in a negotiation where, I mean, most people feel in a negotiation, you know, if I have to give up a little bit and you also give up a little bit, then we probably have arrived at a pretty good uh, deal. Exactly. And really the key is, 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 is walking away feeling like both parties, you know, kind of kind of won versus both parties kind of losing. And that that's that, you know, that sometimes it's such a simple little thing, 
but that simple little thing can make all the difference because remember what's simple and little to you might be the most important thing to the other party Mm -hmm. and and again like i said again it it ties back to your to your original you know idea about understanding people understanding motivations etc i think it's uh, um fascinating so um we're bumping up against the end of our time here dave but i want to give you a chance to tell people a little bit more about yourself how they can learn more about you and your company Sure. Uh, well, here's the book again. Uh, I, I, I've learned, having done four books, that uh, people seeing book covers actually sells books like crazy. So mm-hmm. I'll just leave it up for the rest and say that you can get any of my books on Amazon. My uh, last name, uh, Kerpen, K-E-R-P-E-N. Uh, I'm on every social network. So if anyone has questions, comments, concerns, hit me up on you know, Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook, or whatever social network you're on. Um, and actually in, in 2019, I'm committing to every single Thursday, giving back to people. So uh, mm-hmm. called giving Thursday. So anyone that wants to schedule office hours with me, they can go to schedule and can chat with me and uh, pick my brain about anything that's on your mind. Uh, schedule every Thursday in 2019. Excellent. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks again, Dave. This has been fascinating. I really encourage you to look at the book, The Art of People. Uh, I'll see you all again for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.